Hello, I'm Dr. Lee in Yonsei University. Let me introduce our study. The aim of this study was to evaluate changes in renal function in children underwent redo pyeloplasty. If left untreated, UPJ obstruction can lead to impairment of renal function. Although pyeloplasty has been known to be highly successful, failure requiring secondary operation occurs. Currently, several studies have reported on the high success rate of redo pyeloplasty. However, to our knowledge, the factors affecting real function after redo pyeloplasty have never been reported yet. Accordingly, our study could be helpful to understand the functional outcomes of little pyroplasty. Let me introduce Dr. Zhang, the first author of this study. Hello, I'm Dr. Zhang, urology resident in Severance Hospital. I'm going to present material method and result in this study. In this study, medical records were obtained from a database of patients who had undergone lidopyroplasty. Between January 22 and November 2010, a total of 18 children underwent lidopyroplasty by a single surgeon at Severance Hospital in Seoul, Korea. The initial pyroplasty was performed at Severance Hospital in 11 children and the remaining procedure was performed at other institutions. For evaluated Long-term outcome, we assessed periopride factors and evaluated change in renal cortical thickness, renal function, and hydronephrosis, using obscurial ultrasound and renal skin therapy. This table is characteristic of patients who underwent with pyroplasty. It showed that each patient data and operation cause type outcome. Fair of initial pyroplasty was just by their obstructive symptom or signs. The decision to perform with pyroplasty depended on the presence of symptoms, functional loss, and an aggravated obstruction pattern or a huge urinoma. We divide all 18 patients into two groups according to change in DRF. Six patients showed a decrease of more than 5% DRF compared with the initial. Gender, age, follow-up duration, hydronephrosis grade, and operation type were not statistically different between the two groups. Additionally, RDRF, as a reflection of recovery after lead pyroplasty, was not significant between the two groups. TDRF was calculated as the difference in DRF between before and after initial pyroplasty. In the decrease group, the mean DDRF was minus 23%. In the low decrease group, the mean DDRF was 0.91%. DDRF differed significantly between the two groups. And the DRST was calculated as the same method. In decrease group, the mean DRST was higher than that in the no decrease group a significant difference between the two groups. This figure shows change of renal function after initial and lead pyroplasty in two groups. Finally, we noted a significant positive correlation between DRST and DDRF. Patients with a decline in DRF of more than 5% showed great decrease in RST. Meanwhile, the others showed almost no change in RCT. After lead pyroplasty, prevention of further functional deterioration was observed in only 12 of the 18 patients. After dividing patients according to this observation, we discovered significant difference in both DRF and DRT between the two groups. Additionally, we noted a significant positive correlation between changes in TRT and TDRF. All patients showed improvement in high process grade and relief of symptoms compared to before lead pyroplasty. Lead pyroplasty should be considered in case of failed pyroplasty. 
to preserve renal function or to relieve symptoms. It should be performed before severe deterioration of differential renal function or decrease in renal cortical sickness. Thank you.